is the big O show. Oh, yes, it is, baby. We are ready to rock and roll from beautiful Lad Peebles Stadium here in Mobile, Alabama. Year 21, I think it is, something like that. I don't know. My memory is really bad, but it's been a long time. And so uh, we are enjoying ourselves here. Day two of our coverage at the Senior Bowl. We got a ton of things uh, to talk about. We got a ton of people to talk to. Hopefully, we will uh, we will get some players in uh, shortly, uh, and we'll start getting some folks in. We'll also get uh, Michelle Kaufman on at 2 o'clock at our regular time. It's funny because we've been talking, we have had our inter segment now for several months, and there's been no soccer. Now she's covering like real soccer. Like there there are real players on the field. So we'll uh, we'll get to that. We got real players here on the field at Lad Peebles, and today at one o'clock will be well, two o'clock your time, but one o'clock our time uh, will be the first practice, and then we'll see the second practice for the North. Uh, at three like we did yesterday and we'll be out here throughout the practices and we'll try to scoop up some guests for you we'll try to get players also we are told we could get players uh maybe in about a half hour around uh 11 30 your time uh we could start getting some players here and uh available to us uh at the uh senior bowl so we're looking forward to it um yes right yeah locally just put yeah put locally all right, when you always put it, put locally, just so they know. Uh, well, well, no, no, but 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 no, but tell her we're open. Any, no, 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 tell her we're on till, we're on till six. Yeah, tell her we're on till six. Yeah, I'd rather her. Yeah, because I don't want her to cut off during the the practice, because if the other team's not practicing, we got the opportunity. Leave all options open to yes. get players. Yes. yes, yes, just need a couple minutes heads up. That's all. That's all. That's all. So there you go. So that way, that way you got it. That's why you got to keep on the YouTube and all that. So you, you guys got You guys get all the behind the scenes stuff when you're tuning in like this and everything that's going on. So it's uh, I don't know if it's a, a we got nothing to hide, man. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't care about that. Yeah, there's no no doubt, nothing to hide. It's just I have no idea if it's a treat for you or a disaster. I don't know whichever, however you want to look at it. All right, we got a lot of things. I, I mean, I, I I don't know where to start with what happened in the Kansas-Kansas State game. Uh, we got the Purdue player getting stepped on by the Illinois player. We got the Heat and the Wizards back in action tonight. We got the Panthers with a nice win last night. Vetrano with a hat trick. And we've got Derek Jeter getting in with Larry Walker to the Hall of Fame but Derek Jeter did not get 100% of the vote. And look, I, I, the game is what it is, okay? You're not going to help the game at all with the votes, okay? The game of baseball is just, it, it's like a, a, a train compiled with a snowball, compiled with a fireball rolling downhill, Okay. It's just this ginormous thing that's just eating everything up because it, it's just headed downhill in every direction, okay? And this is all part of it. And, and not that this does anything to the game itself. The game is boring. It's a strikeout or home run. Uh, the players aren't as smart as they were back in the day. They, they're not as versatile as they were back in the day. Uh, the game is so much simpler than it, it for the manager too uh, nowadays compared to back in the day. Uh, it, it's just not nearly as entertaining anymore. And when it comes to young people, they have no interest. I, I just told you about Michelle Kaufman on the Inter Miami beat. When we get to the 30s, okay, we are in the 2020 right now, right? This will be the last 10 years that baseball is in the top three in this country. Okay, the MLS and soccer will pass them up when we get to the 30s. Baseball will be buried at that point. It'll be a fringe sport just like hockey. You'll see it's already happening. Basketball and football are light years ahead of baseball. Kids that are into their 30s and under. They're not kids they're men already, but all the way down to the kids. And I'm talking like the millennials and the Generation Z's. It's football, basketball, and soccer for them. 
They don't have any interest. They don't have baseball on their radar. And part of, you know, the problem with baseball has been all the archaic rules, all the stupid unwritten rules, the stuffiness that comes with the game. And and then all this, I mean, Hank Aaron is supposed to be in there 100%. And so is Babe Ruth. Okay? And so is Derek Jeter. There are some guys that just, dude, there's no discussion here. Just insert the man into the hall. That's all. Look, I'm a huge Derek Jeter fan, the player. Okay? The executive, I mean, uh, there, there's nothing to be impressed about with the executive so far. So that, that you know, when it comes to my Marlins, I, I, I can't be impressed with Derek Jeter. But I have to compartmentalize this whole thing. And I have to separate it, right? And obviously, as a player, Derek Jeter was a stud, dude. Ultimate leader, winner, clutch player, all of those things. That's who that guy was, is, has been, whatever. Etched in stone, put his ass into the Hall of Fame 100%. He's not going to go flipping out about it because that's not who he is. Never has been that guy. And he shouldn't. It's not his place to do that. It's my place to do that. You know? And I hope that person gets exposed because that person should not have a vote. I mean, they he got 99.7% of the vote. That's just some idiot wanting wanting to be contrarian. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. Just a guy that wants to go against the grain. I mean, that's the only way to look at it. You're, you're not going against it with any kind of substance whatsoever. You know, when Nolan Ryan comes up, just induct him into the hall 100%. No, there's got to be somebody that has something up their ass and they've got to like, okay, no, I'm I'm not happy because of, I don't know what it is. I mean, even if the player was a jerk, and if he or she is a Hall of Famer, then that's all you need to know. That's all you need to establish. Do they do, do they belong there? Hells to the yeah. Check. Move on. I I I would love to see these votes should be made public. And I know some of these guys are now posting their votes and stuff and which I'm glad, but it should be made public. We should know who you are. Because the person that didn't vote for Jeter should have their vote stripped. And I don't know if it's a young person. I don't know if it's an old person. I have no idea. But this has been going on forever in baseball. So to me, it, it just seems like there's this inherent type of attitude that you have to find some fault in certain players. So they, I mean, Hank Aaron, like, who's the, who are the idiots that don't vote for Hank Aaron? That, that doesn't make any sense. That, that part I don't understand. What are you, racist? I, I Like, that's the only thing I can come up with. It's not because of the player. Nolan Ryan, what is it? You don't like, uh, I don't know, guys with big thighs? So you didn't vote him in? I have no idea. How, how do you hold back Nolan Ryan? How do you say, nah, I'm not voting him in for the Hall of Fame? Kyle Ripken Jr., Ken Griffey Jr., it's ridiculous. We've talked about, you know what, I could see these guys on the golf course and it's like, okay, somebody's got to abstain. You know, that this is the way we do it. Yeah. This is the rule. You know, that old fraternity crap. And, like, somebody has to vote no. I, I, like, I don't get and it. And I thought, honestly, I, don't get it. I thought that this had changed because of Mariano, that there was a new precedent and we were going to start to see. And here we are right back where we were, one-year blip. And, 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 again, to me, that – you know, you should be stripped of your vote. That's all. Because you're you're actually irresponsible at that moment is really what you're being. You're not, you're not, it's not about being contrarian. 
it's not about that you found some kind of a stat or something that he wasn't exceptional at, so he can't be a Hall of Famer, which I don't know what it is, and I don't really care. I watch the guy. I know what a Hall of Famer looks like. That's a Hall of Famer. That's a no-doubt, no-brainer Hall of Famer, period. There's no argument, no discussion whatsoever. Get his ass in there. And when I saw that, it was just, you know, th these are the things. I Baseball was my favorite sport growing up. I, by the time I became a teenager, football took over. But I grew up with an incredible love for baseball. And I've noticed how I've lost interest in baseball as, as the years have gone on. And I know it also hasn't helped that our Marlins have been so, you know, non-competitive and it's just a team that's not even trying to win and it hasn't been trying to win in forever. And so I know that that kind of takes away some of our love for, for the game itself. But the game overall just continues to lose me. And here's where I find myself talking about baseball because it's not like people are ever going to call in about the game. Not that people are ever going to chime in on the YouTube chat board, on the accidentlawfirm.com text line, whatever it nobody cares about baseball it's very few people that care about baseball and we have very few towns now that are left that are hardcore baseball towns it's only a couple of those and the rest of the country the ratings tell you all you need to know it just gets worse and worse and worse every year because baseball's baseball's fans are dying it's the only sport in this country that is not gaining uh, the same kind of momentum from young people that they're losing from old people. Okay? As many football fans die, many more are born. Can't say that about baseball. You can say it about basketball. You might be losing basketball fans every year, but you're gaining a whole bunch of them every year too. Around the world, by the way. Let me add that caveat. Okay? That's where basketball even has it over football. That they're gaining popularity. They are the number two sport in the world is basketball. And let me tell you, a lot more people play baseball around the world than they play football. Not football, but football. Okay? And yet, it's number two in this country because football is a monster. And, and, and listen, we've had this conversation over and over again. Social media, go look at soccer, basketball, and football. They're all over it. Where's baseball? Where are the baseball players? You look at football, basketball, and, and uh, soccer, they sell their sport. They're on social media. They're on commercials. They're joking with each other. They're all that stuff. Where is it in baseball? You want to connect with young people? You got to do things that young people do. Okay. Hey, go open a TikTok account or whatever the hell that thing is. Whatever you got to do with your baseball, man, you better do something. You, you, you need to make it cool again to play baseball. That's the problem with kids. They look at baseball and it's uncool. Soccer, cool. Football, super cool. Basketball, cool. Baseball, uncool. It, it's really nutty the way the way it works out. But it's, uh, listen, congratulations to Larry Walker. Well-deserved honor. Well-deserved honor for Derek Jeter. I just wish we'd get over this hump. And when guys are no-brainers, let's just give them the 100%, man. It just makes you look like a like an uneducated voter when you, when you do not vote Derek Jeter in. That's all. That's what it makes you look like. That you really don't get it. 786 322 1105 on the accidentlawfirm.com text line. If you want to get in, 786 322 1105. We, of course, are out here at the Senior Bowl, and practice starts at 1 o'clock. So there you go. There's the field. So you can check out the field. It's a little. Uh, Today, it's not as uh, blue skies as it was yesterday because tomorrow we're supposed to get some 
serious rain. It's like down to, uh, uh, no, it's, or should I say down? It's up to 100% now. So there you go. You get a little look at the stadium and everything there. And um, now you get back to seeing my ugly uh, face. But, um, yeah, so we are out here at Lad Peebles, and we will uh, be out here for practice all afternoon. They will start off at 2 o'clock your time. They'll take the field. The south team will take the field. The north team will take the field at 3 o'clock. We'll cover both practices. Now, we will go live till 2 o'clock, till about 2.30, actually, 2.20 with uh, Michelle Kaufman. Then we will uh, watch practice and take some notes and all that good stuff. Anything big happens, we'll report it after practice. We'll get on again, and we'll have some interviews for you. We may have interviews uh, starting in uh, about 10 minutes now. Uh, we There's a window that's open, and we may have some players join us and uh, have a little fun out here uh, at, uh, at the Reese's Senior Bowl. I'm waiting for Anna, too, from, uh, from Reese's to see if she uh, comes by to say hi, to hang out with us. And maybe she'll bring some candy or something like that. I know... I know Bill wants some uh, some Kit Kats is what he wants, right? Kit Kats, is that what it is? I'm a Symphony Bar, Kit Kat, Reese's. Uh, yeah, that's that would cover it. Yeah, We're Symphony good. Symphony's one that not a lot of people uh, not a lot of people uh, uh, eat. Uh, Brandon Flood, yo, got that official Senior Bowl gear. I see. Oh yeah, yeah. This is old. I've had this for a little while. Uh, Eugene LeBranch. Oh, I used to love the Marlins. I haven't even stepped into that stadium they built waiting for some free tickets, LOL. <laughs> Big O, welcome to the area. Remember, Hank Aaron was more vocal about race and injustice. Uh, w Willie Mays and Ernie Banks were somewhat silent. Not Aaron. He spoke up, and yes, he should be in the hall 100%. I mean, well, he's in the hall, but not 100%. Yeah, I took, uh, uh, well, I've taken Bill by hank aaron stadium uh since hank is from here from the mobile area they've uh, they've got the minor league affiliate the stadium that they have here it's called hank aaron stadium uh out here in in mobile so uh there you go little uh little fun fact for you uh appreciate all of you out there of course as always uh listening watching downloading and remember whenever you're downloading the podcast you can always reach out to us on the accidentlawfirm.com text line, 786-322-1105. That's 786-322-1105. And, of course, our show is proudly brought to you by VSS West Pines. And let me tell you, folks, for all of your smoking needs, I'm telling you, whether you're looking for rolling paper from raw to the brand smoking that is really, really popular, hookahs, uh, for those of you out there, uh, they've got all price ranges from $19.99 and up. Uh, CBD products, flour, tinctures, edibles like chocolates and gummies and jelly beans and ice cream. In fact, I just took this morning the CBD uh, turmeric and ginger. Actually, it's an orange jelly bean that is uh, got turmeric and ginger. And turmeric obviously is good for the heart and the ginger. So uh, that's one of the CBD products that I take every single day. It's CBD, it's CBD, turmeric, and ginger inside of it, the jelly bean. And it tastes really good. It's orange flavored and all of that. That's what I'm telling you. you got all these kind of different options. And whether you're doing it for pain or for stress, they've got all kinds of different CBD products. Go to the website, vsswestpines.com. Follow them on Instagram and on Facebook at VSS West Pines. All right, we got the... Uh, Heat back in action tonight, taking on the Wizards at 7.30. Uh, Jimmy Butler with that sore hip is listed as probable for tonight. Uh, Duncan Robinson is questionable with the ankle strain. And uh, Goran Dragic has got a bruised knee. Seems like Goran is like always getting banged up. So you're 19-1. and one. You got thoroughly embarrassed by this team the last time you played. They scored like 80 points off the bench which was just ridiculous. Might have been like 85 or something off the bench. And you 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 got to exact revenge tonight, right? I mean, there's, there's no other way for the Miami Heat. I don't care whether Jimmy plays or he doesn't play. You need to win tonight. 
You you need to play some badass defense. You need to if, if you can embarrass them uh, tonight, go do it. Because brother, they lit you up like a Christmas tree the last time, and guys were scoring points that they had never ever performed like that in their lives, and maybe never will perform like that again. So that 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 performance has got to be lasting a little bit for this Heat team. So I would imagine that tonight they're going to, you know, look to exact a little revenge in all of this. Um, let's let's talk a little bit uh, about um, Antonio Brown because this one is it. it I, we we talked about this yesterday because it was breaking while we were on, and and uh, Cameron Wolf was obviously following the story. Glenn Holt, his trainer, has been arrested. Okay, and he was arrested uh, on battery charges because, uh, uh, according to the report, a truck driver for the delivery service, and apparently there was some. I think it's Nicole Linsalata, I think is her name from Channel 7. She reported that it was due to payment, that there was a, a you know, a disagreement. And, and it seems like Antonio Brown, look, I, I, I get this. Antonio Brown will end up broke, right? I mean, it, it's he's already, I think, pretty much we're convinced he's crazy, right? This is a, a young man that is not sane. This is a young man that does not or chooses not to get help. I don't know if you guys, have you guys seen the Delonte West story? I don't know if you've been following it. Do you remember Delonte West, the basketball player? It sounds familiar. Played for your Celtics, actually. A bunch of point, a bunch of tats all over the Dude, place. Say some, that's like saying you're Philly Sixers. That's once upon a time, bro. Okay, well, but I mean. If they're in a championship, you're bragging about them. No, I'm not. Are you, yeah, you, are, are you yeah, high? Yeah, 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 you're probably going for them. You're probably, no, you, dude. you got a Celtics jersey under that shirt, don't you? Uh, never. Yeah. I've never owned a Celtic jersey, yeah, actually. Yeah, 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 ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a Kyrie Irving jersey there still. Okay, but you're the guy with the Dr. J in your uh, studio. <laughs> hey, bro. I will, I, uh, the doc is always going to be my guy. Um, So, you look at this whole situation with with Brown, and then I'm, I was telling you about Delonte West. And Delonte West was seen getting beat up in the middle of the street the other day. And apparently he's living in the streets, and, you know, he's in a really bad shape right now. And, and people have tried to even reach out to help him, but he refuses help. And this is kind of... The catch-22, isn't it, with a drug addict? The catch-22 with a guy that uh, or a woman that chooses to gamble or an alcoholic or or if you have some mental instability, it's trying to reach that person to try to help them. And if you follow the Delonte West story or if you, if you haven't, look it up and you'll see that it's, it's just, it's sad made millions of dollars that they should be living a comfortable life the rest of their lives and if they have any kind of issues like this that they have the money to at least get the care that they need right but unfortunately a lot of these guys end up with hanger-ons and people that are not going to protect them and and try to look out for them they're going to try to facilitate whatever disaster is going on and kind of egg it on and maybe that's what happened to delante where he had his money, he had his success, and now he's had his fall because he had nobody around him that actually cared to look at him and say, dude, don't do this, you know? And sometimes your friends or your family members, you may, you may not like them approaching you about the brutal honesty, but deep down inside, if you care about yourself, eventually you're going to thank them because they're showing you that, they're willing to put on the line their relationship or whatever it is because they want you to get better. And there is nobody around Antonio Brown that cares enough about him to get better. So he is in a destructive mode now. He is destroying people's lives, not just himself. 
he has obviously destroyed his career. I would imagine that by now the NFL is not going to deal with him anymore. I would imagine. You never know with the NFL because, again, they're Teflon, and they can get away with this kind of stuff. But this is the part that's obvious. The trainer, Glenn Holt, is arrested, which, by the way, he worked for St. Thomas. Used to work for St. Thomas High School. Uh, Brown is now a suspect of battery uh, on the truck driver. He, by the way, looks like he fled because they could not find him. Hey, let me tell you, AB's pretty fast. There were DBs all over the league that had problems catching up with him. So the cops, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for him. And then he's got, you know, Chelsea uh, Chris, which is his baby mama. They, she put out some tweets, okay, uh, about them and their relationship and what was going on in their relationship and how he treats her, okay? And this is the part that, I mean, when you see this, uh, when you see the way he treats her, he, it's he, he, he uh, you know, threw jelly bean penises at her, kicked her out of the house. You guys saw that video with the Hollywood cops and all that. Then after he asks her to come back to the house so they can have a threesome with little Wayne's ex, apparently. Okay. I mean, really, this, this is, this is the stuff that's going on with this guy. Yeah, she's smoking D's if she thinks anyone can remove you, of course, because you're doing this S because you want me. You can't be hating and not taking care of me. Selfish. Ah, Chelsea, let me sex you with another girl for 2020. That's his text. He sends to her, accomplish some fun S just one time for me, fake ah. And I, I want to live every experience with you. And then, uh, you know, he just goes on to like, it's just, it's disturbing. I'm telling you, it's it's absolutely disturbing when you start to read some of the text that goes on with uh, with Antonio Brown and his and his uh, baby mama. And she put it all out there. She put all, she put all the all the texts and all that. She took screenshots of it, put it out on IG, put it out on tweets. It's all out there. It's all out there. So after he kicks her out of the house, he wants her to come back to have a threesome. Oh man, this is one of those where we can laugh about it because the guy's crazy, but it's going to end like really, really, really ugly. Okay. I mean, this is one where I don't know where you see the light of day for Antonio Brown. I was just going to ask, do you think we're coming up on that point of no return. Oh, we're already at the point of no return. Already. You think we're already past that yes. mark? We're already at the point of no return because now the cops want him. And remember, all of his legal issues are going to continue to pile up. This driver that he assaulted, allegedly, and his trainer, what do you think he's going to do, ladies and gentlemen? What, what do you think is next now for that driver? That's with an attorney and have his attorney call the other attorney. I mean, that guy already had like 15 calls from different attorneys already as it is. Because those hooked up attorneys got his name from, from, some, from the police department, from somebody that they know, and they found the number right away, and they probably already reached out to him. Okay? That guy's going to make himself some money now. Or, or And whatever's left of a... See, that's the thing with... A.B. doesn't realize that legally, in the end, he's going to have to pay. And he's going to have to pay a whole lot of people. Not just baby mamas, not just his kids, but all of these lawsuits. And you and I know where he ends up broke. Because he has to pay lawsuits and he has to pay attorneys. That's a lot of money, ladies and gentlemen. And then you got the baby mama and you got several kids. That's even more money. And you live the lavish lifestyle that you live, that you're probably burning through money every single day, a ton of money. You kidding me? And you know what's the best part about all of this? 
is that right now he's probably thinking of a way that he will be on an NFL roster when training camp rolls around. He probably has convinced himself that he'll be there still. And that's what happens to a lot of these guys that go broke because they think that that easy money is going to continue coming in because, no, we'll get, I'll get back on track and I'll make all that money. And now nobody's really going to pay you anymore. Now everything will be incentive-based if you ever sign another deal again. I don't think you will anymore. At this point, I would imagine that an NFL owner now says, no, 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 I can't bring that guy in. No, 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 no. That, that, that guy will love us in the first day and then be ripping us the next day on social media. Guaranteed. <laughs> that's that, that AB story, that's a sad story, ladies and gentlemen. That is one that is not going to end in a, in a nice fashion, all right? By the way, you could start out 2020 with a better smile by going to Moody S. Dental. And I know I did because I wanted to straighten out, especially my bottom teeth. So I've got my Invisaligns on, and they are the Invisalign and implant experts. So if you want to, you got some issues with your teeth, and maybe you're not smiling. I know how it is, man. You're... Your, your smile is not as confident when your teeth aren't looking as good as they can. Go to Moody's Dental, and whether it's a cavity, whether you want to clean your teeth, whether you want to have a crown, uh, whatever it is, implant or Invisalign, they are the experts, folks. Get in there for a free consultation for your implants or your Invisaligns, and that way, for 2020, you can start looking with a better smile. Call Moody's Dental. Call Eric right now, 305 305- 821-0231. Make sure you mention our show. Mention my name. They will take care of you at Moodyus Dental. All righty. Welcome back. Hey, uh, you just heard that spot in the break uh, talking a little bit about Rockville and uh, looking forward to Rockville. Don't forget, folks, that we are giving away passes, okay? Pairs of passes to Rockville where you get to go for three days. You see, I mean, so many different bands. Let me see if I could just pull it up for you here. But, I mean, the amount of bands that are going to be at Rockville is sick, okay? From Leonard Skinner is going to be there, Disturbed, uh, Godsmack, Deftone, Social Distortion, The Offspring, Stained, uh, Lamb of God, if you happen to be a Lamb of God fan, I'm not. Uh, Dropkick Murphys. Uh, let's see, who else do I like uh, here? Alter Bridge. Pretty Reckless is not bad. Bad Wolves. Hell yeah. Um, Joyous Wolf. New Year's Day. Uh, there's so many good bands that I, at least I enjoy. There's a lot of new young bands that I like, like Joyous Wolf. I'm a big fan of theirs. New Year's Day I like a lot. Uh, bad Wolves is another one. Those are Those are new bands that are... Really, really good. I enjoy them. Uh, Anthrax is going to be there. Can't wait to see them. Mastodon. Uh, I, I tell you, that just it's crazy. It really is. The amount of bands that are going to be at Rockville and the opportunities that you're going to have. So send us on the accidentlawfirm.com text line. You got to put in your full name, your email, and your cell phone. That way we can contact you one way or another that you won. So we can contact the winners. And by the way, I hope to see you over there. We will be broadcasting from Rockville for those three days, May 8, 9, and 10. And for those of you that are asking, April 8th, we will give away the uh, passes. That's a month before Rockville. That gives you a month to go get your hotel, your Airbnb, whatever it is, wherever you're going to stay in the Daytona area. That's the other thing, man. So cool that it's going to be in Daytona. Nothing against Jacksonville. But I really like that the fact that it's at Daytona. I mean, like, you know, when, when the day's done, I know we're going to be kind of toast. But if we felt like going to a bar on the beach, have a couple drinks before we go to sleep, you know, that's pretty cool, man. You can't do that in Jacksonville, you know? No, the sidewalks roll up and that town is closed. With right. Quickness. Right. But Daytona, I think there'll be a little life and you can probably enjoy a little bar action or something. I, I, let's be honest. Do you really think after a 14, 15-hour no. day that no. we're going to want to do anything other than take a shower and go to sleep? Probably not because I'm old, but you never know. No, maybe some of the people, maybe some of the listeners or something, we, 
meet with some of the folks after or something. You never Look, know. it's going to be May. It's going to be the start of summer, okay? Yeah. Being outside all day, it, 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 you know how it is, man. That heat, it just takes it away from you. Yeah. We're going to be worn out. Yeah. And anybody in their right mind, I mean, it, it has nothing to do with us being old because what we did the other night, going to Steve Harris, even young people don't do that, okay? Oh, Give yeah. us some credit, brother. Yeah, Give oh, us yeah. some credit, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially after driving 10 hours that day. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's one of those deals. No doubt about that. Anyway, if uh, you want to get in on the accidentlawfirm.com text line, you can do that at 786-322-1105. And speaking of music, did you hear about Hall & Oates and Squeeze touring? You're looking at me like that, like, so that's whoa. That's an interesting, right? an interesting combination. Right? Like, uh, look, I've seen Hall & Oates a zillion times okay a zillion times the last so, time we saw them they were good yeah no they're they do all their they do all their hits no no, well, no not all of them but you know what i'm saying no no i, I love hall and oats they don't give to wrong. the fans they give to they try don't get me wrong i love hall and oats okay but this really caught my eye that squeeze um, is actually going to tour with them because I'm a huge Squeeze fan. In fact, I was playing some Squeeze in the car. Uh, I think it was the day before yesterday when we were driving up here. Uh, I was playing a little Squeeze. So they announced uh, the, the uh, tours, the tour dates. Guess what, Bill? Uh, is this going to be good news or bad news? Both. Oh, okay. We'll take the bad news first, please. They're, they're not coming to South Florida. Uh, big surprise. The good I'm news? I'm in shock. <laughs> the good news? August 15th, you can see them in Tampa, Florida at the Mid-Florida uh, Credit Union Amphitheater or whatever, right next to the Hard Rock. I'm going. Special, I'm just going. I'm going specifically for Squeeze. That's it. I just want, I've never seen Squeeze before, dude. And so this is my 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 uh my chance to see Glenn Tilbrook do his thing. I've never seen him, man. I think it'll be cool. What do you think? You gonna you you coming with me to that one? Um, I'll have to make that decision as we get closer to that. I date. gotta see Squeeze, bro. I you know gotta see Squeeze. Gotta it, see Squeeze. It, you like you like we've talked about putting that stuff up on the scale and like that's okay a, this is the effort this is this what are we going to get yeah, he's what, opening what, he's the opening you know act you know you know what's the only they what are, are we they about? are the opening act yeah um, of course and what are we talking about you know 8 10 12 tops you know what i what i don't know is um what is uh what is february 26 I ho i'm hoping that's the other thing i'm hoping it's like a friday or a saturday i'm not i'm hoping it's not a tuesday speaking of uh, uh, the other thing that brought that's pretty interesting, because Anna from Reese's. You are one day off. It's Wednesday, brother. Wow, that's terrible. That sucks. That sucks. Wow. Well, but the good thing is I could just broadcast from the hotel and then then go do the show. <laughs> that's what I'll do. Um, you know where the tour starts? Because it's interesting. Hershey, Pennsylvania. Yeah. No, that that's actually really cool. February 26, Hershey, Pennsylvania, and the Giants Center. How about that? So if Anna comes by, we'll ask her about the Giants Center. So you could actually fly up there, hang out at Hershey Park, enjoy the concert. That's a, that's a, I, I think that's a pretty cool thing right there. They are going to Madison Square Garden right after on February 28. That's pretty cool to see that concert. At MSG, I mean, look, man, any concert you see at MSG is good, but I want to see a little squeeze, man. That that, that to, I saw that today, and I was like, this is, this is mighty mighty cool to see squeeze. That was that is the kind of tour that I want to be a part of. Uh, the other thing is, uh, on on a sad note, I'm not sure if you guys heard about this. Ozzy Osbourne has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and he is still going to be able to tour. Um, they, they, 
what's it called? Uh, Sharon Osborne was talking about it. She says it's Parkinson's too, which is a form of Parkinson's said while sitting next to her husband, there are so many different uh, types of Parkinson's. It's not a death sentence by any stretch of the imagination, but it does affect certain nerves in your body. And it's like you have a good day, a good day, and then you'll have a really bad day. Osborne added that a host of medications, I got numbness down this arm for my surgery. My legs kept getting cold. I don't know if that's the Parkinson's or what, but you know what? That's the problem because they cut nerves when they did the surgery. I never, I never heard of nerve pain, and it's a weird feeling. So Sharon uh, said that it's important for her husband to be on stage and feel the love from his fans. It just means so much to him what he does. She said he loves to perform. It's in the air he breathes, and this is the longest he's ever been home, and it's time for him to get back on the road because he's driving me mad. Can I be a little bit brutally honest here about certain things? When you do something you love, right, and it becomes a part of what you are, it's it's something that you never want to lose. And so you see it with entertainers. They will perform as old as they can possibly be until they physically, physically cannot do it anymore. You'll see an athlete. They will hang on to their career as much as, I mean, think about Tom Brady. The dude's won six titles. It's six, right? Not five, it's six. Yeah, he's number six. Right, he's won six titles. He's got Giselle Bunchen waiting at home every single day. She makes a hundred times more than he does. Okay, so not only do you have some beautiful kids, not only have you made a boatload of money in football, okay, and you'll continue to make it as an endorser, you've already won six titles. You don't have to play another down again. You don't have to prove jack to anybody. You got fine-ass Giselle Bunchen, who makes way more money than you, waiting for you at home all the time, and you're still playing football. I mean, most normal human beings by now would have said, dude, I've done enough. Let me just go bang my, fa- my fine-ass wife every day. I mean, really. What's your exercise, Tom? I'm having sex with my wife yeah. every three hours uh, you know, while we're awake. Yeah. You have a Peloton, I have a Boonchin. I mean, that's it. You ride a Peloton, I ride Giselle. I mean, that's what I would be doing if I'm Tom Brady. At this point, what what, what are you doing, Tom? Well, you hang on to your career because you love it. The dude loves it. He loves it so much, he's opted out of his deal and maybe plays for somebody else now. That's how much he loves it. So they hang on, and they hang on. And there are people in your lives that you know that, you know, it's your dad, it's your grandfather, it's your uncle, it's your best friend's father, whatever, and they've been working at something forever, and they love to do it, and they continue to do it. The, the scary part is when, they're, when that symbiotic connection exists between you and your career, when you take the career away, the person wilts and sometimes even passes away, and they lose their identity, they lose... They feel like they they are nothing anymore. And it's not accurate and it's not true, but psychologically it's something that eats you alive. And I'll give you an example, and it's Joe Paterno. And Joe Paterno is a guy that, you know, he, he even had cancer. He was diagnosed with cancer while he was still coaching. And yet it didn't really take over and no, none of it really took over hold of him until they took coaching away from him because Joe Paterno for sure was going to coach until he could not walk anymore until he could physically not do the job that's when he was going to stop coaching 
But once the scandal happened, and obviously his disgusting ways that he handled that scandal, and he deserves every bit of criticism, and and he deserves to, to lose his name, put it that way, because of the way he hit a pedophile, okay? I have no sympathy for, for Joe Paterno at all whatsoever. You abuse men, you abuse women, you abuse kids, you abuse animals. You, you're, you're not going to get any sympathy from me ever, okay? And if you protect somebody that is an abuser like he did, you're not going to get any sympathy. But they took football away from him, and he died. That was his death sentence. And, you know, it's a long way of coming about this, but I think that's what Sharon fears, too. When she says it's time for him to get on the road, she sees the effects of him not being able to perform. And then all the tragic things that he has gone through in the last year, because he had a brutal fall, man. I mean, he dislocated bars he had in his neck and all kinds of stuff, and they had to fix him up, and he was going through all kinds of things, obviously. He said, and then obviously the Parkinson's now, and what's going to keep, can, can you imagine if you tell Ozzy that your career's over also, and then the, the, what's left of his life is fighting Parkinson's and old age and his body breaking down? This is what he does, because he can probably do it asleep. He can do it, you know, because it's he knows those words inside and out, and he's been performing it, and he, and his memory is still good enough that he can remember all of that right now. Glenn Campbell, towards the end of his career, had to have a teleprompter. And Ozzy, by the way, in the past has had a teleprompter too. Did you so. see Glenn? Did you see Glenn Campbell? Um, I caught it. Uh, my folks happened to be watching it. PBT Channel Two. And um, he actually literally read, uh, you know, guitar solo followed by, you know, just reading off the teleprompter. It was funny. Right. Everybody was laughing. But it's sad. But it's sad. Exactly. It's sad. It's sad. The Parkinson's, man, to not have control of your muscle, to not have control of your own body, oh, to not be tragic. able to brush your own teeth. It, it, I can't imagine. That, that is an evil, mean disease. Yes. Yes, it is. It's it's sad, and I I think that's where I think Sharon is at that crossroads now, where she's worried about that, and she should be, and we all would be worried about it, and I think we've all experienced that that person in our lives or somebody that we know, that one of the things that they did in life brought them a lot of joy, whatever that career was, and then once you took that career away from them, they don't feel nearly as useful, and and it takes a toll on them mentally and and sometimes it's 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 it becomes you know a, a tragic ending to it and i think that that's something that she must be worried about because i would be worried about it because i would think that ozzy looks at his career in that fashion where it's what he does it's who he is this is how he's identified and if he's not able to do that anymore and not able to hear the fans you know cheering him on and all of that then I think that's a day that's that's going to be a sad day for him. You know what I mean? With people like this, with their careers and whatnot, the symbiotic relationship, it's almost like elderly people, the yeah, wife and the husband, when they're, when they're married, one, yes. one passes away and yep. shortly thereafter, the, the other, other one, one, it just, they can't live without that other piece. Yeah. Yeah. You and know, that's, it's so symbiotic. Yep. It just, and it, it, it could be, and this could be the case for, for Ozzy. When I when I look at it, it's it's sad, man. It, it's sad to see him go, you know, to this level and to have to deal with uh, with Parkinson's. It's uh, it's it's a tough one, man. All right, uh, 786-322-1105. That's 786-322-1105. If you want to get in on the accidentlawfirm.com text line. Uh, remember, the program is brought to you by Toyota of Hollywood. We love Steve Ostrov, all the great people out there. Herbie, uh, let me tell you, they are the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. There isn't a, a, a better or number one Toyota dealership than this one. Nobody. Everybody else is two or three or way behind Toyota of Hollywood over 400,000 square feet, a state-of-the-art facility, 
Folks, don't make your payments until 2021. They've got 0% financing up to 72 months. They've got so many different programs, over 1,500 cars and trucks in stock. And folks, they've got some deals right now, pre-owned vehicles where you can save 50% or less, man. I mean, it's just amazing. 2020 Corolla LEs. Listen to this. Not 22,000, not 16,000. How about 13,775? Get on down 1841 North State Road 7. Tell them that big O sent you just a couple blocks south of that big, beautiful guitar. On the turnpike, it is Toyota of Hollywood.